Hello everybody, today we're talking to Peter Neumann. He is an expert on terrorism and radicalization processes. You know, years ago we saw how Western people, Western teenagers, were flying to the ISIS territories to become terrorists. And the question is, how does someone become so brainwashed as to become a terrorist? How does that happen? How does all this mental process work? Today, Mr. Neumann is going to give us the answers. Mr. Neumann, first of all, thank you so very much for being here with us, answering our questions. Thank you. I... It's great to be here. <laughs> great. So <laughs> I would like to start asking you, why are you so fascinated by, by radicalism, terrorism, political violence? So I started getting interested in this topic because when I was a student, uh, I studied in Germany, but I did my Erasmus year, my year abroad in Belfast in Northern Ireland. And I spent a year there and it was a really interesting year, 97, 98, because that was the year when the conflict ended, they struck a peace agreement, but there was still violence going on. So I could see the terrorism, I could see the conflict, but I could also see how the two sides were coming together to make peace. And that really started interesting me and never kind of let me go. Then 9-11 happened, it yeah. turned towards something completely different. And of course, the interest evolved, but that's where it came from. And isn't it a little bit frustrating dealing with such a destructive to topic? Sure, but I think it, the interest is the destructive, the destructiveness of human nature. No, I think that's, the, that's what fascinates you. And I'm sure it will never end in a way. In many ways, there are signs that it might get worse. But there's also hope that people can resolve their conflicts in other ways. Well, I wanted to ask you, are, are terrorist attacks still a threat to the West? Um, they are a threat for sure. They, I don't think they are an existential threat. So I don't think that any terrorist right now is capable of doing an attack like 9-11, for example, or something as massive as triggering a nuclear bomb or doing a really such a massive attack that it would change the shape of the world and it would uh, almost jeopardize the existence of a country. I don't think any group has that capability right now. What terrorist attacks do, and that's why it's problematic, is they kill people, but they also polarize our societies. Yes. Um, so the discourse in uh, society about Muslims, for example, has become a lot more extreme, partly as a result of terrorist attacks. It becomes easier to stigmatize yeah, people. So, so it and that's what the terrorists want to do. They want to divide us. They want people to have the impression that every Muslim is a terrorist. Um, and because that helps them. Uh, terrorists benefit from divided societies. They benefit from polarization. They want to exploit that. And that's why terrorism sure. is dangerous. I, I, I like, sorry to sure, interrupt go, you. Go ahead, go but ahead. Like, I, I like that you make like a, a correlation between uh, the influence that terrorism has in political systems. Mm -hmm. And what's the influence of political systems in terrorism? I, 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 I'm especially interested in Middle East, the Arab Peninsula, uh, UAE, countries like uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, even Qatar, that are starting a trend of liberalization. Mm. How does is that a sign of the radicalization of the of the area? Well, I think there are a number of things going on. The first thing is that people in the Middle East, as a result of the last fifteen to twenty years. Are, seem to become less interested in extreme religious ideology. You can see more secular people in the Middle East, and in fact, a number of countries have gradually liberalized, not necessarily the political system, they are still monarchies, yeah. but they've liberalized lifestyles. So they've given people more freedom to express themselves, and I think that's also an expression of people, first of all, being interested in those freedoms, but also societies becoming slightly more tolerant. And that's definitely a good sign. On the other hand, there will always be extremists who see that as a sign of weakness and want to attack that. Yes, you say that actually you have studied, uh, especially in the latest years, more yeah. Salafism. Yes. And you say that 
radicalism is social mm. and emotionally satisfying. Yes, yes. What do you mean by that? How can it be? So we've studied a lot of young people in Western societies who traveled to Syria to join ISIS. And so if you look at many of the people who found ISIS to be good and wanted to support it, quite often what you see are people who've gone through identity crises, who are quite confused, uh, they are second, third generation descendants of immigrants. They still haven't completely arrived in Europe, partly because European society doesn't fully accept them. Um, many of them uh, used to be active in gangs, have criminal backgrounds. They've experimented with Western lifestyles, but it didn't really work for them. And so when they, when they get in touch with Salafism, which is a very strict and very rigid interpretation of Islam, the most extreme interpretation of Islam there is, in Salafism, there is a rule for everything. It, you want to know how, as a Muslim, you should tie your shoelaces? There will be a rule for that. And for some people who are very confused, who are all over the place, who don't know where to go into society, this certainty. is... It is a structure. It gives them an answer to everything. You follow the rules, you will go to heaven. And it gives you a perfect guide to how to live your life. And you even get a reward, namely you get salvation and you go to paradise, all your sins are being forgiven. And for a certain type of person, mm -hmm. this is very satisfying. And on top of that, of course, sorry if I go on for very no, long, no, no, but no, 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 on, to, on, on top of that, if you become a member of a Salafist group, you become a member, almost like, it's almost like a family. Yeah. It's very tightly knit. I, yeah. I, sorry, 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 yeah. because I, I wanted sure. to go deeper on this because I remember I'm a Spanish. Yeah. And I remember years ago, there was a, I think it was 2016, when they captured a Spanish teenager mm -hmm. on an airport. Mm -hmm. She was going to, to a camp from the Islamic State. She, mm -hmm. she was about to meet a link in Turkey. But the girl, she wasn't, she didn't have a Muslim upbringing. She was mm -hmm. a girl like with the same education I could have. Uh, she was, I, I think even she was baptized, I'm not sure. But, but she was definitely not. Muslim, yeah, and yeah. she got radicalized, brainwashed to... Uh, how, how old was she? She, uh, she was a teenager. She was like she was a teenager, a, yes. 18 years old or something. Mm -hmm. How can that happen? Well, I mean, we've seen especially a number of very young women who have no Muslim backgrounds. And they went to Islamic State 2015, 2016. And it's easy to kind of to, to be too simplistic about it, but quite a number of them considered it almost a form of youthful rebellion. It was the most badass, it was the wrongest thing you can do. And it was something to escape from everything that you, th you thought was kind of constraining you. And of course that was, in a way, it was a ridiculous idea because they went into a society that for a woman is much more restric restrictive than anything they can ever experience in the West. But that was their idea. It was an idea of adventure. It was an idea of, it was an exciting idea. In many cases, uh, uh, sad to say, it's also a case that some of these young women um, had been in touch with fighters in the Islamic State via the internet and they were yeah. almost recruiting them and they were being promised a, a beautiful life as the wife of a fighter and having lots of children yeah, in I a perfect those, society. Those pictures yeah. on Tumblr, with exactly. the, even with romantic messages. Exactly, so quite some of them were expecting. And it's really interesting because me and my colleagues were, in, were following a lot of these fighters as they entered into Syria and there were a lot of very young women, teenagers, 15, 16, 17, 17 year old who two or three weeks later realized they made the biggest mistake of their life and that this was not what they were looking for and that it was impossible for them to escape because how do you escape out of Islamic State if, if you're a 15 year old girl it's really difficult and whether how can you tell what are the first signs to tell somebody's being radicalized well so this is really the hardest the hardest thing because you have to distinguish between someone being religious, which is okay, and someone being an extremist, which is not okay. And 
as you're becoming more conservative religiously, you will grow a beard, for example, if you're a man, you will start wearing your clothes in a particular way. But that is not necessarily a sign of you wanting to become a terrorist. So instead of looking for those superficial signs, I would listen very carefully to what they say. If they start not having contact anymore with their old friends, if they start talking about foreign conflicts and that they want to participate in them, if they start talking about jihad, if the people they hang out with and that they are connected to and they chat to and they post stuff on their Instagram profiles, if they are known extremists, then that is definitely a warning sign. Just because someone grows a beard, that's not yeah. a reliable Actually, now, now that you mention yeah. social media, internet mm. posts, well, I'm a YouTuber. Yes. <laughs> so um, I really believe that YouTube is a great, powerful Absolutely. tool to spread ideas. And I think uh, also YouTubers, we have a, responsi a responsibility. And well, this is why I would like to now reverse the roles. And maybe, please, what would you like to ask me as a YouTuber? Is there any question you would like to... I would be interested to understand, uh, since you've posted a lot of stuff on YouTube, what works best? What gets, what gets the most... Is it if you say something controversial, something outrageous, something maybe extreme, does that work best? Actually, no. No? I have, I run a, with my partners, we run a visual politics. It's a mm -hmm. channel about international politics and yes, economics. Yes. So we could have tried to be controversial, but actually what works the best for us is the more educational, the better. When uh -huh. we can add value and educate people in Middle East, uh, using some of your reports for some of yeah, our videos, uh -huh. people are fascinated by it because they are learning things. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, And how do you deal with uh, the sort of comments in, uh, that are left under your video? Uh, I'm sure there are people who are saying very there are haters, shitty things. Haters. There are haters, but we don't have so yeah. many. No? Like, generally speaking, we are pretty much like, a, I think, we are very lucky. We have a great audience. By the way, if you are watching the, this interview, you know, guys, you're part of it. I love you. Os quiero un montón a todos. Uh, <laughs> thanks for commenting. And well, to wrap this conversation up, uh, we would like to get, uh, again, a little bit more personal. Yeah. Uh, in a few sentences, uh, well, do you have kids? No, I don't. No, okay. In case that you would have kids, in a few sentences, what would you do if one of them starts showing those signs of radicalization? Well, the first thing is to have a conversation with them uh, to try to understand what's really going on. And the second and the most important thing is that if you really have a kid who says, I want to go to Syria and fight there, in most cases, parents, as much as they love their kids and as much as they are convinced that they know best, often they are ill-equipped to support and to stop their kids. So in that situation, you need help Don't try crazy things because in many cases, the stuff that parents do actually have the effect of pissing their kids off so much that yeah. they will leave. So in that situation, they're in well, almost well, well, every... It was, it was in a few sentences. Yeah. It was, it, it, sorry. There, there's, there's, yeah, we, there, we there's have in every, in every right community, now. there are hotlines you can call. Yeah. So seek help. Seek help. Okay. Uh, well, please, now, complete the following sentence yes. with one word. Social media would be better if? Uh, social media would be better if everyone behaved responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, that's something that's a, we can dream it's of. It's a dream, yeah. That's it's a, a dream, dream sometimes. A... Well, and in just one word, and I guess I can figure out the answer, but okay. in just one word, Which characteristic do you think our society lacks? Um, what society? Western society or... Uh, I think it's the... In, not in one word, it's one, it's half, half a cent. It's the ability to see an issue from the other person's perspective. That's what I think is lacking most. We have arguments and I think we should more often try to put ourselves into the other person's shoes. I think then, I think it would, a lot of solutions Empathy, would become. Empathy, we could say. Empathy, exactly. Empathy would That's be the one word. word. 
empathy. And that will work both from Western societies in any, as in any, any society, other kind of society. In any society. I think that's often lacking. We are not even making an effort to understand what the interests and what the convictions and what the values of the other side are. If we did, we could more often accommodate the other position. Okay, well, so, Mr. Neumann, I have to say that mm, thank you so very much. Uh, I respect your work a lot and I respect your time even more. And thank you. Talking about respect and thank you for being here. Respect is another thing we're all lacking, but thank you for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.